Uh, as, a, as like an immigrant, a Muslim, fairly liberal person, I think this is probably the best event that I've uh, been able to access just because I'm not sitting in the audience and nodding for an hour. <laughs> well, thank um, you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I, I really do uh, appreciate the, the platform for free dialogue. I think it's extremely important uh, for there to be free speech so the good ideas sort of crowd out the bad ones. Um, the reason I'm, I'm kind of here today is because you know while I was sitting there, and, I, and I've noticed this in a lot of your your videos, which I, I do spend some time watching. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Definitely entertaining, yeah. So, um, so like you know, like yeah, like yesterday, right before coming here, um, or before I slept, I watched you on Piers Morgan talking about gun control. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I heard you for an hour today, and I think what I realized is it's I think the first step is talking about free speech, and I think the left can definitely work on that. Uh, the second step is is using solid uh, sound. Uh, I guess, evidence for your speech so mm -hmm. that truly you have good ideas crowding out the bad. And I just wanted to take issue with a few things that you mentioned uh, that I felt were a bit more sensational, uh, a bit more, I guess, I, I know you're from like a, a lawyer background, so I, I can see. No, go for uh, it. I'm, I'm yeah, so like you mentioned for uh, rape on college campuses from 1995 to 2002 was a statistic you used. I because those are the last available statistics from the Sure, BJS. sure. So, so yeah. there's current statistics that you think um, have I guess methods that are you know, unjustified because it's self-identified, uh, but that's contemporary. And you're looking at something that started uh, 20, 20 years ago, um, and then making up for the caveat that, OK, it's, it's uh, self-identified, so it, it might not actually reach that amount. So what I'm saying is, so clearly we don't have sound data on this, um, and, and maybe not all of the self-identified reports are justified. But using a statistic that's 20 years old, even if it's the most contemporary one that you have, is, I think, unsound in terms of academic discourse. So I agree with you. I'd like to have better statistics. Now let me ask you a question on that. Do you think that the rape rate in the United States on college campuses is closer to 6 in 1,000 or 250 in 1,000? I, I definitely think it's somewhere in between, and I don't think I have. No, but I mean, like, if you had to, if you had to try and peg a number, I mean, I, I understand that I'm putting you on the spot a little bit here. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to iterate. I'm not a, like a scientist or a statistician, and I don't claim to or posture to be, and I don't think you should either. If you don't have statistics, do you, you think can't. that it has increased no, ten thousand percent? No. What I'm saying is, for you to criticize a certain community of using a statistic, one out of five, as sensational or ridiculous, because the people who actually created that statistic you. say that it's being misused. Sure, and you're using a statistic that's twenty years old. Because it's the best statistic available. Again, if you're willing to give me better statistics, I am more than willing to hear them. No, and as fair. I've said, if you provide me new evidence, I'm more than willing to change right, my mind. Fair, yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have the political knowledge to, to, to debate that. So like, just, I, just a couple things. So moving forward, I think you talked about, um, I don't know, you said, like, you mentioned Jim Crow laws and, and slavery for what kind of pushed uh, black people back. And you said, okay, th this is in the past. Again, this is an example of taking the, the opposition's argument, making a character of it, and dropping it down real fast. Everyone knows about Jim Crow. Everyone knows about slavery. Not as many people know about, for example, redlining in, the Chicago, in Chicago in, in, in the 1960s that the CBL had to push out by 1964. The, these kinds of systems have been entrenched for years. I think uh, most people have read uh, Tanyasi Coates' article on, on how this has developed a a you know, system of entrenchment for these communities, even today, uh, under Rahm Emanuel, who's a Democrat and I think is wrong, um, implements TIF increment financing that takes money out of Western and, and Southern uh, Chicago and, and reappropriates them to places that don't really need it as much. Clearly, there's a lack of funding. He closed 47 schools over the past years. What I'm basically trying to say is there's a lot of factors going on in these communities that are predominantly black, Hispanic, et cetera. And for you to simply say that, okay, Jim Crow happened 50 years ago, racism hasn't increased, is, is a bit, I, I think, again, insincere because I don't believe that racism has, I do believe that racism has decreased and, you know, yeah, we're, we're saying the N-word less, sure, but I don't think that racism at a systemic level has decreased because the same communities that were affected in the 1960s, you know, those people are still alive. That's a, that's a wild accusation. I mean, that, like, I'm, I'm with you all the way up till the end. When, okay. when, when you say there's a lot of complexity to these arguments, I agree there's a lot sure, of complexity sure. to these arguments. Yeah, I'll okay. tell you where there is no complexity, and that is the only way you are going to get out of the current problems that you are in is by relying on yourself to make good decisions. That's not to say that there aren't obstacles, and if there are obstacles that you can name, I'm more than happy to stand there and fight them with you. If you can show me evidence of redlining by a bank in which a black person and a white person are being treated unequally with exactly the same application, I will stand next to you and root for them to be prosecuted in court because that's illegal under the Civil Rights Act. But if you're going to suggest that racism has not decreased over the last 50 years, it's just sort of hidden, there is no evidence to suggest that whatsoever.
Sorry, I, I might have misspoke. So I, yeah, I agree with you. That, that was uh, my bad. I don't think racism has increased. It's absolutely decreased. But I think that the institutions that existed 50 years ago haven't really vanished. The, the title character of, of the Atlantic story, Clyde Ross, I went to his house. You know, he is experiencing the same things that he experienced 50 years ago. Um, the government will come by. And I know you say that the government shouldn't fix this. And I agree. I'm just saying the government shouldn't make it worse. The government comes by. They say, hey, we're providing subsidies for these communities to become better. You can use it for paint for your house, uh, better windows, anything that the, the, like the public can see to make it look better. But he doesn't have ho a heating in his house, but he can't use it for that because that's just not the system that's in place. Right. All I'm saying is the that government sucks, yeah. But I, I totally agree with you on that. But I, <laughs> so um, all I'm trying to say so is. So come that, to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess all I'm trying to say is. Um, I, I definitely agree that these are complicated. I think the left and the right, they take small points and they sensationalize them to create a political platform. I would just appreciate it, since you are a journalist and not a politician, to the same kind of you know, due diligence when you really like offer input, because a lot of people listen to you, a lot of people respect your Well, okay, so, so again, the, the article that you're citing by Tan Hesey Coates, I haven't actually read that article, so I'm not gonna claim knowledge of an article that you've read and I haven't. So I'll take your account of the situation for what it is, which is there's some guy who is apparently being victimized by the government because the government will only give him subsidies for X, Y, and Z, but he actually wants it for A, B, and C. My answer to that is that it's not the government's job to provide subsidies for anyone. And if the, if the government is mal-appropriating subsidies, I, I object to that regardless of the race of the person. Like, I object to subsidies to the ethanol boondoggle in Iowa, which is basically white people. I object to subsidies to Wall Street. I object to all these subsidies. I don't think the government should be involved at all. And this fellow who you know, was victim, to, to pretend that that systematized discrimination under Jim Crow that was happening in 1960 is the same as a badly run government program in 2017 because they want to give you money for your windows but not for your water heater. Again, I don't see the relationship between the two and to suggest that the banks are operating in the same way now as they were operating in 1960, I don't see the evidence for that either. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to look at evidence but I need actual evidence. I, I can't just base it on headlines.